Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sofin, and welcome to a Paragon Math video, where we delve into the numbers behind the cards and kind of see what kind of value they actually have. In this video, we're taking a look at Riot Sapper, and then, like always, we start off with a TLDR. It's a 2 Vitality, 5 Knowledge, Chaos card, gives a good amount of power and some ability armor, but the active removes 40% of current mana from nearby enemy heroes, dealing ability damage equal to the mana, that mana removed. When you crunch the numbers, essentially, Riot Sapper, well, completely depends on the enemy's current mana level. It must be used in the appropriate scenarios, aka when they have lots of mana. Riot Sapper eliminates enough mana to prevent three to five abilities being used by enemy heroes. That is substantial. Riot Sapper also provides the damage of a good caster ability dam a good caster damage ability when used against a caster. Riot Sapper provides a damage of a weaker caster ability when used against a fighter or a carry. Combined, however, this is similar to when used on a caster. Riot Sapper provides a total damage of a big caster ultimate when used on any three enemy heroes, whether they're a fighter, a caster, or a carry, and Riot Sapper almost provides the total damage of two caster ultimates when used against an entire enemy team. Some conclusions, given that Riot Sapper can almost always deal moderate damage and prevent enemy ability usage at the same time, there's little reason to not use Riot Sapper as a damage and utility card. 24 ability armor, on the, on the other hand, gives you 12% ability damage mitigation and is very respectable on such a substantial damage and utility card. As long as one uses Riot Sapper smartly against enemies with high mana bars, the current, man, current mana levels, Riot Sapper can be a staple damage and team utility card for casters or even knowledge frontliners. That was the TLDR, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to stick around for the delving into the numbers behind it and kind of see the proof of how we come up to this, this is for you. And also if you are newer. So Riot Sapper, if you don't know, 2 Vitality, 5 Knowledge, Chaos card in the Chaos Affinity, giving you, again, good amount of power and a good amount of ability armor. The stats are not bad. The active is very particular. Remove 40% of current mana, not maximum mana, it's current mana. So if they are lower, you know, if they've used all of their mana, you're not going to really remove much of anything. From nearby enemy heroes, dealing ability damage equal to the mana removed. 45 second cooldown means basically you can use it in almost any engagement as, you know, every 45 seconds you're likely to be engaging somebody. Costs 75 mana, which isn't too, which isn't too bad in the early game. Eh, that's that's all. That's that's a that's an okay amount, but in the late game, that ain't very much at all. When we take a look at kind of the most simple of the math here, we're just basically the current mana of the enemy target versus the ability damage that we would do to them, and also the amount of mana we would remove from them. I mean, it's pretty simple. 100 current mana of the enemy hero, you, 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 you remove 40 and deal 40 damage. When you're talking about, say, a max level carry here, who has about 500 mana, some carries are very different. Drongo, for example, has uh, has a mana pool of almost the, almost the same as a caster, uh, uniquely enough. You know, you deal about 200 damage and remove about 200 mana. From, from a fighter, there's lots of differences in, in, in the fighters and tanks, and there's, there's a lot of differences, but I kind of just took an average or your typical fighter, around 600 mana, dealing 240 damage and removing 240 mana. As you climb up the, you know, the current mana level, you get to about the max level and knowledge, once you add in all the mana you get from the knowledge tree, caster, well, it turns out to be 480 mana and 480 ability damage. Not too bad. You know, if, a, if, if that caster has used a couple abilities and they're 1,000 or 900 current mana, that's still some pretty good mana you're removing and some pretty good damage as well. 360, 400-ish, and down from there. So, pretty simple math. Now it gets more interesting. This, what you are seeing here, is certain scenarios uh, that, you know, that we put ourselves in, and we use Riot Sapper against different targets at different hero levels. So, for example here, this is our fighters, this is our carries, these are caster. Again, typical 
mana levels um, and and, ma and and mana per level. Uh, you know, there's lots of fighters that are different. There's some carries that are different, and the casters vary um, vary themselves. So it's just kind of your typical mana pool, and they can ver very much change. This is the hero level of these. Uh, of of these heroes, and this is how many of which we are using Riot Sapper on. So, for example, in this scenario here, where, where, where the, the enemy heroes are average hero level 8, and we're using it on one caster. So, this scenario is one caster at various hero levels, dealing 252, 396 ability damage, and removing that exact same amount of mana. In this scenario here, we're using it against a caster and a fighter. So perhaps, you know, uh, the enemy jungler comes in to gank you, and you use Riot Sapper on the enemy mid laner, and fighter. Well, there you go, 398 damage, and mana removed to 614 damage, and uh, mana removed. So the numbers really aren't that bad. Here, level 8, dealing 252 damage. That's pretty darn good, if you ask me. In this scenario, say you are the mid laner and you gank the duo lane against the enemy carry and their caster support, and their jungler comes in to help them out. Use it on three targets here at level 8 or level 20. For example, 542 to 816 ability damage and total mana removed. That ain't bad. Team util you can start to see the team utility of that all of that mana being removed and abilities that the enemy team won't be able to use starts to kind of come out here and it you know it actually honestly looks pretty darn good for one card dealing that amount of damage and having that amount of and that that amount of team utility not bad in this scenario we're we are we're a total of four enemy heroes that were used two casters say their support and their mid laner against their caster and maybe their jungler coming in you know the entire enemy team uh decides to take Fangtooth, and their solo laner is still doing their thing, so you use it on four of the enemy team, for example, 794 damage, all the way up to 1212, um, or 1212 damage here at level 20. Not bad. Not bad at all in terms of, uh, in terms of damage and in terms of total mana removed. Uh, down in this scenario, this is where we use it in against the entire enemy team. You know, the entire enemy team is close to us and we can get Riot Sapper off on all of them. Two casters, usually one in the mid lane, and one as a support, they're, they're one carry, and they're two fighters, one in the solo lane and in the jungle. Just typical kind of team composition, really. Here, you can see 941 to 1430 overall damage used, on, used against the enemy team and that amount of total mana removed as well. That's pretty good. Those are some good good numbers uh you know that you're gonna be hard pressed to get that that amount of damage on a single um you know caster ability even a caster ultimate once you kind of think of all the people that'll just walk out of a gadget tesla dome or walk out of a howitzer make it rain or you know or just not be able to date like especially as a bellica you're gonna have a tough time doing 1430 damage with anything on any target really like even if even if you somehow get a four or five person seismic assault into a void bomb, um, I think that I think you'll do that much damage then. But that is really starting to get quite significant. In these scenarios down here, I, it, I just wanted to illustrate what one carry when you use Riot Sapper against one carry, it really doesn't do much. 144 mana removed and ability damage 202 doesn't really do much one fighter your typical fighter against somebody like crunch has a higher mana pool you're gonna see it doesn't do very much when you combine them though against a fighter and a carry all those numbers actually start to look much more similar to a single caster so that makes sense carries ha carries and fighters have usually about half the mana pool of a caster, not quite, uh, but that you can kind of see those numbers uh, represented here. Against one fighter and one caster, again, or one carry, again, you can see the mana pool is pretty good. One caster and one carry, say you're the mid laner with the Riot Sapper and you gank the enemy duo lane, well, it looks pretty good. 400 damage, 5, 5, almost 600, looks pretty good. Two casters, for example, and one carry, you dive the enemy, the enemy backline, 
as a countess or as a, as a shinbi or something like that, and, and you pop Riot Sapper at the beginning of an engagement, look at that, a thousand damage there in the there in the late game, 648 in the early game, and in this last scenario, two carries, for some reason, one fighter and one, and, and one, um, and one caster, you can see some pretty good damage as well. So overall, the point is, it looks all right. With all of that said, what are some statements that we can make about Riot Sapper? Really, it completely depends on the enemy's current mana level. It must be used in the appropriate scenarios. And that's kind of what a lot of you are likely thinking. It's current mana level. And yes, that is the really kind of the clutch to Riot Sapper. That is, you know, that is the crux. You have to use it when the enemy team has a higher mana levels. If you use it at the end of an engagement, well, it's pretty much useless. So it's completely dependent on the enemy's current mana level. You have to use it appropriately. When used appropriately, though, Riot Sapper eliminates enough mana to prevent three to five abilities being used by enemy heroes. Why such the spread? Well, Somebody like Crunch, he has a really quite low mana cost abilities. Somebody like Terra here, on the other hand, has a higher mana cost abilities. And of course, casters and carries, and it all depends. Usually it's about three to five abilities being used. That's significant. You know, if you're talking about the end of an engagement, especially in the mid to late games, you know, that end of the engagement might be the turnaround point that you need. The enemy team can't use those abilities that they otherwise would have because you remove their mana. Maybe that's enough to turn the tide of a battle or secure, uh, you know, a couple of kills or secure that advantage. That is definitely something you have to remember about Riot Sapper is that if there's utility also connected to the to the damage of this card. Riot Sapper almost provides the damage of a good caster damage ability, something like an R2000 Missile or a Cosmic Rift, especially a Void Breach, when used against a caster. Especially when you're 1v1ing a, a, a caster, for example, it basically provides another hard-hitting ability. Basically. Riot Sapper provides the damage of a weaker caster ability, something like maybe like slow grenades or maybe even a Void Breach if if you aren't leveling it, something like that, when used against a fighter or carry. But when you combine, you know, a fighter and a carry together, the total damage is similar to when used on a caster. So you kind of don't really want to use it against a fighter or a caster singularly. But if they are together, then it start to get good value from Riot Sapper. Riot Sapper provides a total damage of a big caster ultimate when used on any three enemy heroes. It doesn't really matter what they are. As long as there's three of them, you start to really get good, good damage. The keyword here is total damage of a big caster ultimate. Um, of course, when you get, say you get a howitzer make it rain on five of the enemy team and all of that damage, well, you know, a thousand times five does not equal what, uh, what, si what Riot Sapper can provide. But realistically speaking, you're not going to get all, all of that damage on five enemy heroes. People are going to walk out of your ultimates. People are just going to, you know, mitigate it in other ways. So that is really important. Riot Sapper provides g great damage once you're talking about three enemy heroes and more. And Riot Sapper almost provides a total damage of two caster ultimates when used on an entire enemy team. Basically, that point is it's a ton of damage, truly a ton of damage, once you start using it on four and five enemy heroes. So, in conclusion, given that Riot Sapper can almost always deal moderate, at least, amount of damage, again, when using against higher, against higher mana pool enemies, then cur higher current mana pools, and the fact that it prevents enemy ability usage at the same time, there's little reason to not use Riot Sapper in a damage, in, in a damagey build, especially combining something like Riot Sapper with Amplification Engineer. Like, you know, they're both chaos. One Riot Sapper kind of curves into um, into Amplification Engineer, just that it's it's some intellect, and you usually get one point into Vitality, anyways. It's great. This one deals percentage-based damage on their mana pool. Amplification Engineer deals percentage-based damage on, on health. So, I mean, combine the two, and you're talking about extreme 
you know, health and mana manipulation. 24 ability armor. Haven't didn't show the math for, but I mean it's really quite simple. 24 ability armor for an extra 12% ability damage mitigation is absolutely respectable, especially on such a substantial damage and utility card. So not only does it provide substantial damage when used appropriately and in and in most scenarios, and that that utility from the mana from the mana drain also gives you 12% ability damage mitigation. It's just a cherry on top. As long as one uses Riot Sapper smartly against enemies with high mana bars, Riot Sapper can be a staple damage and, and team utility card for casters or even knowledge frontliners. If you're, if, if especially if you're working in like a frontline, um, a frontline Plague Lord Malink, and you want to get Riot Sapper in there for some ability armor along the way and some good uh, utility and damage. Hey. That can totally work. So there you guys go. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of Riot Sapper. Would you get it? Where do you see you using Riot Sapper in your decks? Amazon is the tried and true way of shopping for anything you need or want at the lowest prices. Support the channel at no cost to you by doing your Amazon shopping through the link in the video description. Please like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it. Share the community, of course, guys. Subscribe. If you guys like this content, especially if you found it useful, hit that subscribe button so I can do it for you in the future. Check the video description or links to my website, Merchandise Store, and Amazon Affiliate Link as well. It's all my social media right here. Huge shout out to my Patreon supporters, YouTube sponsors, Twitch subscribers, who all go out of their way to really make these videos possible. Until next time, like always, stay optimistic and positive.